this is my normal starting point for raising the mast. Um, you've got the, uh, the foot of the mast over here, down at the bow. Uh, so I've got all my shrouds actually uh, bundled up. And I do that to keep them from rubbing on the fiberglass and the gel coat. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to attach the, uh, the wind vane. And then we'll go ahead and uh, attach the topping lift, uh, which goes right here on the end of this tang. Right there. And then uh, the backstay. And then the main halyard. All right, so this is the mast head. I've got the uh, topping lift already attached right here. This is the main halyard, which I marked with green. Um, so the main, the jib rides on the front of the mast, and the main is raised on the back of the mast. And so it goes from back to front. So you always gotta make sure you don't get that one confused, otherwise you have to pull your mast back down. So here you see the masthead uh, fully rigged up. It's uh, laying on the port side now because uh, I wanted to be able to show you where the uh, Davis wind vane is mounted. So that just pins in with a, one single screw. The uh, halyard again is from back to front. Uh, and then this gets cleated off on the starboard side and uh, you always want your jib on the port side and your main on the starboard side and the reason for that is uh, that way when you go to reef all your reefing stuff on the boom should also be on the starboard side and so what I do is I actually sit on the cockpit roof or on, I'm sorry on the cabin roof and uh, you know that way I'm always on a starboard tack and have the right of way all right, so here's the jib halyard. Uh, again, this one goes from front to back because the jib is raised along the uh, forestay and then the halyard runs down along the mast. So front to back, marked with red, to remind you that it's on the port side and that it's the jib halyard. And then this is the, uh, this is the forestay. Okay, so here you see the, uh, the backstay rigged up, and uh, one thing you want to make sure is that the, uh, the shroud goes over the top of the bow pulpit. Accidentally you run it through here, um, because then when it comes up, it's going to hit this. It's going to hit this right here, so that, that's not going to work. So it's got to be over the top of the bow pulpit. ready to raise this mast. Uh, this is the line that I use to assist with lifting the mast so I can lock that in. Uh, and uh, that's attached with a uh, with a carabiner to the forestay. So I'll give that a tug as I'm transitioning from standing in the cockpit to uh, standing on the cabin roof and then I'll lock it in so that I can make that kind of transition. So this is the main halyard uh, secured to the horn cleat on the starboard side. This is the uh, jib halyard secured to the horn cleat on the port side. Inner shroud, outer shroud. So I usually put these uh, shrouds with the, uh, the pins facing aft sure that everything is untwisted as you raise it nothing snags so all right I'm gonna wait for the wind to die down a little bit and then I'm gonna give this a go
So here's the boat with uh, the mast now raised. The boom is not on there yet, but uh, single-handed mast raising. That's, uh, well, I guess one way to do it. All right, this is the bow chain plate. You can see there's three holes. The uh, forwardmost one is for attaching your uh, anchor road uh, so that when you drop your anchor, it doesn't all uh, run out. The middle one is for the forestay. If you're in a pinch and you can't reach it, uh, then you can just put it on the back most hole, the aft most hole. Uh, it'll be a little easier and then move it up when you can get some more leverage um, usually from the ground. Uh, and then the back hole is for the, uh, the tack of the uh, jib. Okay, so the forestay turnbuckle is the only one that gets adjusted once the rig is tuned. Um, so when you take the mast down, uh, you take it out, make sure you count your number of turns. I usually do uh, six full turns, so 12 half turns, um, and that makes it easier to get it out of uh, the uh, chain plate up on the bow. Uh, and then, so when, once you get the mast up, all the shrouds should be already tuned, and then you just tighten this the same number of turns um, that you use to take it down. Uh, you have to make sure that the, uh, the length of the screws are the same on each side, and so to do that, you have to use a wrench. Um, to hold the forestay, otherwise you're twisting the forestay. The forestay will twist and then uh, the, uh, the bottom one won't. So just make sure you do that. This is the end of the boom. This is uh, the downhaul. This is uh, what I use for uh, my reefing hook, which I made myself. Uh, this is the uh, boom vang. So the, the line should be facing down to the bottom, and then that clips in to the bottom of the boom. Right there. Okay, so this is the uh, main sheet, this is the topping lift, and then this is uh, the outhaul for your main sail. And then this is the cleat for the outhaul. And then on the other side is your, uh, your Jiffy Reef. So the Jiffy Reef is tied off up right here. The line is fed through the sail from the port side, through the little cringle, uh, and then to the starboard side, down into the pulley, and then the line runs down the boom to the, uh, the other shackle on the other side, or the cleat, sorry, the cleat on the other side. Okay, so this shows uh, all your lines rigged. So this is the main halyard. So I just cleat, cleat the uh, end, and then uh, it runs up from back to front. And then you run the working end down through the pulley, and then uh, back into the cockpit, into the cam cleat. And so on your starboard is your main, and on the port is the jib. Uh, again, it has just like the main, runs through a pulley, and then uh, back to a cam cleat. All right, so next is uh, bending on the sails. So each jib sheet uh, goes through the cars, and then of course one to uh, starboard and then one port so you can see the sheets and of course in this case I have a jib bag so both my sheets come out of the foot of this bag so you can see the uh, port side sheet over there again outside the shrouds so next the, uh, the tack of the jib is connected to the bow chain plate in the aftmost hole uh, and then you start uh, just hanging it on with the, uh, with the clips so this is the uh, jib 
fully hanked on, uh, and then you connect the uh, the jib halyard to the top of the sail. Okay, so the main sail is a little more interesting. Uh, so when I fold my sail, I will start, uh, of course, at the foot and at the tack end, uh, and then roll the tack toward uh, the outhaul line. So this is the outhaul line, and then that way you can use the outhaul line to uh, to kind of wrap around the sail and hold it in place while you're stuffing in the bag. But also, when you go to put on your sail, um, then that's the first thing that you're feeding out into um, the boom. So this is a, uh, a bolt rope main. So you can see um, the bolt rope right there at the foot, and so that feeds into this slot right here. Okay, so this is what it'll look like as you start uh, feeding it down the boom. Okay, so here you see the outhaul line uh, going down the boom, and then going through this uh, block, and then it's going to get cleated uh, over here on the port side uh, to flatten out the sail uh, once you're all done. Okay, so next we uh, start feeding sail slugs. Alright, so that's the mass track. And start feeding the slugs one at a time. And you to push them down, you just do want to make sure they don't get pushed up. Okay, so now we've got all the slugs fed in. And we've gone ahead and connected the main halyard to the head of the sail. And then also uh, insert our mass track gate. So uh, while you can sail without a mass track gate, it's very difficult to reef or to lower the sail uh, without it because the slugs will start popping out as you lower the sail. So mine is a laser printed one. You can also get metal ones, but uh, very handy thing to have. And as you can see, sometimes when the sail's down, you know the slugs sit right in the mass track. So the gate definitely keeps stuff in there. So here's the outhaul, which I've uh, tightened up. Oh, you know, a lot of times when you tighten stuff up on the sails, you want to make sure uh, your boom bang is slack and your main sheet is a little slack, uh, so that the shape of the sail um, actually sets, you know, where some of these things end up. Especially when you're reefing, uh, before you put in a reef, um, you want to slack your boom bang, your main a little bit, to allow the boom to rise. And uh, you know, again, you're just going to get better sail, sail shape. So there's the outhaul. Okay, so the last thing we have to do at this point is uh, install battens and uh, go ahead and pre-rig the reefing lines. So I have uh, two reefing lines. Uh, both of them are installed on the port side of the boom and then run up through the cringle and then back down to a cheap block and then move to the horn cleat. Let's see how that works. It's connected on the port side. Goes up through the cringle on the leech, comes back down through a cheek block on the boom, and then runs up the boom to a horn cleat. Alright, so the last thing is uh, inserting the battens in the sail. There's three, uh, two short and uh, one long, and uh, I'll show you how those go in. Right, so the battens go in these uh, batten pockets. Alright, so once the batten is uh, fully inserted, uh, this is what it should look like. Um, it helps if you bend this piece back, uh, this piece is part of the sail, just to open up this little hole there um, and get the end of the batten in there. Um, you can also use a little tool like one of these uh, plastic uh, bottle openers um, just to, to pop it in there. Alright, sail's fully hanked on and uh, now she's ready to go into her slip.